Amen. The Bible says we uh, and where your heart is is where it all counts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We just praise you, Lord Jesus. We just praise you this morning. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Y'all just stay in attitude of praise and worship for a minute. Oh, glory, 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 glory. We praise the name of Jesus. The name above all names, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Father. We thank you for all those present here this morning in Jesus' mighty name and anybody watching on uh, social media or however they may be watching, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We just thank you, Father God, for your presence in this place. Glory to God. Thank you for the opportunity to put your word to work in our lives, Father God, for we're doers of your word and not hearers only. Hallelujah. And we, we tie these tithes and offerings, Father God, with our words and we speak over them in the name of Jesus. We just worship you with our substance right now in Jesus' mighty name. We call these tithes and offerings into the kingdom of God now for that purpose. We separate it for that very purpose of preaching your word and sharing the love of Christ with others and carrying on the business of the church, Father. And because we've done that, you will now we, we now know that you will multiply it back to us, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold return. We thank you, Father God, for the 100-fold return of it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You got yours? <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. I know time changed today, but I, for some reason time was on my mind. So Ephesians 5, 16 says, Make the best use of the time because the days are evil. Are we making the best use of our time? Or are we wasting time? You know, we're all busy. And busy is not a bad thing. It's just what are you busy with? Are you busy with the uh, world's time? Or are you busy with God's time? You know, we all have jobs to do. We do those jobs. Don't matter if it's you go out of the house and do a job or you stay at home and do a job. Whatever your job is, do it at your best. But there's times in our day where we're di we just waste time. You know, we need to take accountability for every time, every bit of time we have. We have 24 hours a day. We probably sleep maybe uh, five to eight hours of those days. That's fine. We need to rest. We work, whatever you work, eight hours a day or more. But you know, we waste time. Like if we're uh, at a, we're in the grocery line, or we're waiting to see a doctor, or we're waiting for something. We could be using that time for prayer. Uh, everybody has a phone in their hand 99% of the time. You can look up and read your Bible, or you can do something in your hand. But I did hear something funny the other day about your Bible. I heard this lady, and I thought it was funny. She said, if your Bible has an on and off switch, that's like a man in short shorts. <laughs> so, you know... If you can, if you, you, you know, we really, sometimes we really need to have, hold the word in our hand. But, you know, are we using our time wisely? I mean, we have so much time we waste during the day. You know, when you're riding in your car, you can put the word on, you can put some praise and worship on, and that's the time that you can spend with the Lord. You know, we, we always say, well, I don't have time for this, or I don't have time for that. Quit letting people steal your time, too, because people will steal your time. <laughs> and Satan loves to steal your time. Oh, yeah. He loves to put worry on your mind, concerns. That's, God, that's Satan wasting your time when you're sitting around worrying about something that you can't even do anything about. So, you know, quit letting people, Satan, and things steal your time. Time is a very valuable time, and right now we're living in a world that we don't have a whole lot of time that we need to be out doing God's work. And so, you know, time was important to God, but 
he doesn't live on the same time we live on. You know, we might think we have forever. We might have an hour. We might have a minute. We don't know what God's time's like. So we need to be taking every bit of time we have and telling people about Jesus, praying, getting into this word. You know, we always wonder why some people do better than other people. Well, some people say, well, they were in the right time, place at the right time or they did this at the right time, and that may be so. But you know what? We have to put in the time to get those blessings. As a Christian, we're held at a higher standard than the world's held because we know better, and we've heard the word. And everybody who's heard the word, you're accountable for what you've heard. So don't think that you're going to get away with some things that other people might get away with. And the people who've heard, heard warm, more word, you're held more responsible for what you've heard. So, you know, I've been paying attention, I've been looking around the world right now, and I see a lot of Christians, and they're going, why, 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 why? But what are we doing with our time to change time? You know, we pray for our loved ones, but don't let them steal your time. Don't sit around worrying about them. If they're an adult, if they're not two years old to I'm going to say 16. They're <coughs> held responsible for what they do. You, if you put the word in them and you've taught them right from wrong, then now it's their time to do right. And you've done your part. You pray for them. I'm not saying don't pray for them, but pray for them. But don't let them steal your time of sitting around worrying about them and saying, Lord, 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 what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Turn it over to the Lord, and if they've heard the word, God's dealing with them. He's Amen. in their heart. He, they're, and all they got to do is listen. Amen. And so don't let people, Satan, or things steal your time. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all be sure to share us this morning on Facebook, on your whatever. <laughs> yeah, on our own and off switch. Uh, I, I got a little thing I could tell you concerning that a young lady on one of those things, you know, checking into us. So we can reach people to a degree in in, in some of that stuff. And we need to use every means available to us. Amen. Hallelujah. I will say this: I've been trying to do a little better on my Google account part of this thing. It's a business account, and I, I get a report, and I got a report that we got. Uh, 1,200 and something hits already people looking into our ministry this month this month alone yes, amen. you know they need to start coming and visiting showing up amen that's the only way you're really going to find out you know I learned that years ago going from diff uh, different church and stuff and I'm going to tell you you can't just go one time neither and, and learn something some people will say well you know, uh, that, that, that wasn't it for me. Well, you, you really need to spend some time in prayer and, and seek, out, seek the things of God in order for that to, you know, to get somewhere. Um, and know where God wants you to be. It's important. You know, where you go to church matters. Amen. We've always said that around here. Where you go to church matters. Are you getting fed? Are you getting fed faith? Are you getting challenged? Or are you growing and maturing in the things of God with what you're hearing and stuff? If you're not, you need to, you know, be seeking the Lord as to where you're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Because church isn't a social club. God never intended it to be that way. A lot of people use it as it. And, and the church should have things going on, don't get me wrong. You know, you, it's, it's important to be around like precious faith. It's important because we find the, the New Testament example in, 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 in Scripture. They were daily breaking bread together. They were daily with one another, building each other up, praying for one another. Amen. It's all in there. Amen. It's all in there. But you, you, the old thing of 
well, we want to go there because we have all these things going on for our, our youth or our children or this, that, and the other. That's not the reason you go to church. It is why most Americans go to church, but that is not the reason you go to church. You go to church to worship God, to be fed. Amen. Now, that church should be doing things, you know, for each category and stuff. But you go to church to be edified and built up so that when we go out in the world, we're the same out there in that world as we are inside those four walls of the church. Amen. That takes some doing. It takes some learning and stuff. Um, guess what we're going to talk about this morning? Faith. <laughs> I'm going to try to finish out our thing on faith here just a little bit. You know, you don't have to look or go very far to see some of the principles about faith in the Word of God. All you really have to do is take a look back at one individual, Abraham. Abraham. So we're going to take a little look back this morning at Abraham. So turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Now, if you really want to do a good study into Abraham, of course, you go back over there in Genesis and you read the accounts and the, the story and, and just go all the way through that thing. You know, the Old Testament was written for examples unto us. See, as New Testament, New Testament believers, we can take the New Testament, read it, and see things that... Uh, principles in it and, and, and stuff like that and then you can turn right over there into the Old Testament and find examples of that, that very thing to bring that to bring that out and how that works. It's awesome how God set up the Bible so that it would be a, a huge benefit to us. Amen. Let's pray and we'll get straight in the word here. Father in the name of Jesus I pray that you give me utterance to speak exactly what I am to speak this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for bringing to remembrance everything we've talked about and studied about in Jesus' name. And we thank you and give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father God, that the hearers hear the word, their hearts and spirits are receptive to the word, and your word will, will bring exactly what it says it will bring to each and every one of us because we are doers of your word and not hearers only. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for what's done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Faith brings expectancy. If you're not expecting something this morning out of a message, you're not in faith. Get in faith. Expect something to happen. Expect God to move. Expect the Word of God to, to do what it says it's going to do for you. Amen? Here in Romans chapter 4, I'm going to start in verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. For righteousness. Y'all know what righteousness is. That's right standing with God. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, this morning's message, I guess if you want to title it, Truths About Faith or Faith Principles. And we're going to look at Abraham to learn some things about the principles of faith. And they'll help us in our faith walk. Because, you know, when you go back and you do study and you look into the story of Abraham, Abraham and how his name was changed to Abraham and everything else, it is amazing to me how patient and how awesome our God is. Abraham wasn't getting it. And God had to kind of push him into this place. He changed his name. 
And you can just imagine. Think about it for a minute. Everybody, back in that day, a name meant something. And when he walked around and told everybody, you know, uh, my name now is, I want you to call me Abraham. Of course, they said it different. Hebrew, all this stuff. But anyway, Abraham. Well, Abraham means the father of many nations. And you can just imagine the people. He has flipped his lid, man. He has gone goofy on us. But they dared not say anything because most of them were all employed by him because he was so rich. Amen. So they started calling him Abraham. And every time he heard that name, God did that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith did that. Made him, put him in a position where he had to hear it. Because every time, and he helped Abram out, helped Abraham out in walking this thing of faith out. Now, Mary Jo mentioned something a moment ago about keeping the Word of God and not having a button, but keeping the Word before your eyes. It's important to keep your Word, the Word of God, before your eyes. We miss that a lot in America. We just want to hear the Word, but you need to keep it before your eyes also. Just look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. That's what it says. To be successful, you got to keep it before your eyes and stuff. You got to meditate on it. You not only got to hear it, you got to do all of it. Amen. And so, Abram, uh, being turned, you know, had a name change, goes to Abraham, and then God took him out in the in, out on the beach or out in the desert, wherever he was, and he said, Abraham, now you look. Look at all that sand. So shall your family be. What? Innumerable. You can't number it, buddy. You can't number it. And then in the, in the night, he'd take him out in the night and look up, Abraham. Look at all the stars. So shall your family be. Your offspring. He's keeping it before his eyes, in his ears. I mean, God helped Abraham out big time. Now, crazy old Abraham and Sarah, they decided to help God out after dropping the ball for so long. And what did they create? An Ishmael, something of the flesh. And today, that Ishmael still haunts them. Still haunts them. That's who, the, that's who their enemies are in Israel today. The Ishmael. Descendants of Ishmael. <laughs> it is amazing. But you can go back and you can look at it. But this morning we're just going to focus on the principles that God taught Abraham and, how, and what the Word of God says concerning faith. And if we do the same things... We get the same things that Father Abraham did. Amen. So number one, let's look at number one. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. In other words, faith speaks. If you're a person of faith and you have a circumstance, you have a situation before you, don't just sit there with your mouth closed. You find out first what God's Word says about that situation, and you speak what God says about that situation. Amen. But you speak to it. You speak to the mountain. Amen. Faith believes it because God said it. No other reasons. Faith believes it because God said it. No other reasons. Amen. It's not what the doctor says. It's not what everyone else says. It's what God says. That's faith. Amen. Uh, 
we have a little saying around here we've used a number of times. Uh, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter what my body is telling me. It doesn't matter what my mind is telling me. It doesn't matter. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. You've got to be that tenacious about your faith and what you believe in order for things to work. Lester Summerall once said it this way, when you walk in faith, the faith realm, you remove yourself from the world. You remove yourself from what uh, the eyes see and the ears hear and the fingers touch. You remove yourself from that. Because faith calls those things which be not as though they were. <laughs> Amen. You place yourself in a whole nother world, the world of faith. In that world, you must accept the word of God. If God says it, it's just that way. No other way. Don't entertain any other thought. Don't, don't let it in. We'll get into that in a minute. So faith, real faith is there. God said it. That's the way it is. That's real faith. Amen. So when... We face a situation, we need to know what the Word says about that situation or circumstance. See, you don't have to figure everything out. We do not have to figure everything out. <laughs> no, just call it out. Speak God's Word and don't believe anything more than God. Do not believe anything more than God. When I was growing up back in the day, <clears throat> of course, my mother was diagnosed with, with cancer uh, when I was around 15, 16 years old. And back in that day, when the C word was spoken by a doctor over you, it was a death sentence. You was going to die. And the whole world believed it and knew that. Because they knew very little about, about it. And back in that day, the doctors would then give their diagnosis and then a prognosis. They gave my mama three years, three, three and a half years. And that's exactly what she lived. And doctors have learned since then a lot better. They don't spend as much time because I, when Mary Jo was diagnosed with cancer, we asked, well, they just say, we're not going there. And that's good because doctors have a voice of authority in people's lives. We tend to believe these people. Amen. But let me tell you the voice you need to believe more than any other is what God said about it. Put all other voices out. It's wonderful for medical science and doctors to help us out and do what they can do. It's awesome what they can do. And they can help greatly. But don't ever place them above God and His Word. Don't ever. Don't ever allow it to happen. Amen. You know, the, the true fact of the matter is there is not one single doctor that has ever healed one single person. Healing comes from God and God alone. Doctors treat symptoms, guys. They treat symptoms and they can remove certain things and this, that, and the other. But that's it. They can give us certain potions to help the healing ability that God placed in our bodies to help us along. But doctors cannot heal no one. No doctor has ever healed a single person and never will. 
Healing comes from God. Our God. No other God. Mohammed can't heal you. Allah can't heal you. It's the reason why so many Muslims come to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. He shows up in the middle of the night and says, I'm Jesus. Be healed. They wake up the next morning healed. They're Christian from that day on, brother. I've heard so many of them talk that way. So many. Remember Mac? We watched Mac with Billy Brim. What did Mac say about, about that? Mac said that uh, while praying, his business was failing. He's praying to Allah and his gods and all this and the Muslim faith. And he never got answers to his prayers. He'd go to his wife, who was a Christian, and ask her to pray to her God, and his business would start booming. Yeah. And then one night, in the night, he's asking questions. He's trying to talk to Allah and stuff, and Jesus shows up. He says, hey, Jesus. But Jesus calls him son and calls him by name. This startled Mac because the Allah only calls you a slave. And it blew his mind. It blew his mind. Jesus called him by name. Needless to say, it wasn't long Mac was born again. Amen. And it's very interesting how God uses them today. I mean, absolutely amazing. Amen. Sticking with the principles of faith here. Amen. So real faith is there. God said it. It's that way. That's the way it is. Amen. So when we face a situation, we need to know what the Word of God says about that situation and circumstance, and we need to speak that. See, we don't have to figure everything out. You know, uh, we just call it out. Speak God's word and don't believe anything more than what God says or his word. Don't believe your reasonings neither. Don't believe it. People believe what they can figure out more than what God's word says. They do. They'll do it all the time. Uh, I've heard so many ministers talk about, uh, <clears throat> i got to say this right, uh, people that had came up to them and said, well, the Lord told me to do this. And what they would say would be completely contrary to what the Word of God says. I remember one story about Charles Capps and he said, well, hon, let me tell you something. No, God didn't put that sickness on you, whatever it was they were talking about, to teach you anything because that does not line up with the Word of God. He most certainly did, and I even wrote a book about it. He said, well, I'm here to tell you. He even told her what, what she said in the book, and it startled her, startled her you know. And uh, a year later, goes back to that same church, and that woman come up to him and said, you was right. I learned, and she's still alive, she, you know, whatever had happened to her. But people let their own reasonings get involved there, and, you'll, and I'm going to tell you, we're quick at believing our own selves more than we are anybody else. They're so, you know, that's just a fact. So you have to train yourself to walk this walk of faith. Amen. People believe what they can figure out more than God's Word. Uh, use God's Word and call it out. Turn with me to Jude chapter 1, of course. We looked at this last week, I think. It's only one chapter in it. Verse 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for, for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend 
for the faith which was delivered unto the saints. Now this is big because if you have decided to walk your life out in faith, guess what? The enemy is going to come a-knocking. And what he is going to do, he's going to test you to see if you truly believe what that Bible says and that you claim you believe. And time and time again, many of us, we have to just admit it, we've turned coward and ran when the devil tested us in that area. We, we changed our, 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 our confession and stuff or whatever. And Satan got the upper hand on us because we did that. But I'm here to tell you, you have to contend for the faith. You got to stand your ground, man. Come hell and high water. You got to stand your ground. Because Satan will challenge you whether you believe God's word or not. And let me just tell you this. When it comes to salvation, that's the exact same thing that happens to every believer. Think back for a minute. When you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, how many times the devil came to you and, and tried to get you to believe you wasn't really saved? He's challenging your salvation is what he's doing. He'll get a lot of people to doubt that they were ever born again. They'll, be, they'll go into a church service and walk the aisle a thousand times and pray that prayer. Because they just ain't settled it in their minds and in their hearts that the blood of Jesus has truly washed them clean. See, faith has a tenacity of saying, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Amen. And I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that He's the Son of God and that God that that He paid for my sins and He rose from the dead. Well, guess what? You're saved. You're born again. But but you believe it in your heart first. The very first place you believe it, you believe it in your heart. Not up here in your mind and in your reasoning. They are a lot of people that think they're born again and all it is is mental assent. They aren't believing with their heart. You can't do it up here with your head. You cannot do it up there in your head. Amen. But I'm telling you, you have to contend for the faith. Amen. So number one was... Um, faith calls those things which be not as though they were and then number two is faith believes it because God said it that's all it takes that's all it takes you believe it because God said it can God lie God can't lie does God ever change his mind he's the same yesterday today and forever Amen. And then number three is not to have weak faith. Not to have weak faith. Going back over to Romans chapter 4 again. Verse 19, I think. Now watch this. This is still talking about Abraham. Abraham. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So number three is, do not have weak faith. This evidently is telling us right here in the scriptures that you can have faith, but it can be weak, or you can have strong faith which would be exactly the opposite of that. Amen. Now, think about it for a minute. <clears throat> you know, if you can have weak faith, then you can have strong faith. When God told Abram or Abraham he was going to have a son, he no longer considered his own body. He knew he was too old to have a child. 
He knew his body, his past time to be able to produce a child. He knew that. Amen? His body being now dead. Abraham didn't even take consideration with his own body. Look at it. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. That's strong faith. That is strong faith. So you have to know what to ignore and what not to ignore. You just ignore it. Because if it gets up here in the mental realm and you start entertaining things, that's where the devil works. And he's after your faith. He's after that word of God that's been planted there. Trying to pluck it out. So you have to ignore it. Number four. Abraham didn't consider what was going on with someone that was close to him. Sarah. Look at it. Same, same verse. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't even consider what was going on with someone else who was uh, close to him. This is important. Her body was not able to produce a child, but they didn't lay in bed and talk about it. They didn't consider it no more once God spoke to them. That's strong faith. Faith won't consider someone else's body or what's going on or what somebody else has gone through. We hear stories all the time when we talk about the faith walk. Well, so-and-so was a person of faith and they died. Don't even consider it. Don't even consider it. You do not know exactly where that person was in faith. You do not know it. Abraham did not consider that. He would not consider even Sarah's own body and what her body is saying. So don't go there. Faith uh, won't consider someone else's body. Don't look at what's going on with others. And I'm going to tell you, the devil will parade people right in front of you who have failed. Trying to get your eyes off on looking at, well, you know, man, they've been in church a whole lot longer than I have. and Man, they used to preach and everything else. And they went on home with the Lord. And, hmm. I ain't got the faith they got. Don't consider that kind of thinking. Don't go there. Do not go there. <laughs> I'm telling you. He'll, he'll parade people before you all the time. They didn't make it. How can I? Those sort of thoughts start coming. Your faith is between you and God and no one else. Your faith is between you and God and no one else. No one else. Okay? Uh, number five. Romans chapter four, verse 20. Now watch this. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. So, to stagger in unbelief. What does that mean? What, what, is the, what do you think the word stagger means there? It means one day you're over here and you're strong, yeah. 
and but then the next day you're staggering. You're over here, I don't know, huh? I don't know what's gonna happen to me. You're staggering. Abraham did not do that. It says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He refused to believe it. Anything other than what God said. <clears throat> Amen. Today they believe, tomorrow they, they don't. They're, they're, they're staggering. We stagger when we get into the mental arena. We stagger because we're trying to figure out how God is going to do it. You're staggering. It is none of your business how God is going to bring it about. All you got to do is believe God that He's going to bring it about. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. And if you have to tell yourself that over and over and over and over and over again, do it. Amen. See, there is no faith in our minds. Faith doesn't work up here in your mind. When you start questioning everything, you're entering into the mental realm, the solical realm, the mind, the will, and emotions. Don't go there. Don't go there. Abraham didn't. And you see what he got? He got the promise. Faith is in the heart or the spirit. You can't believe God in your mind. You can have mental assent of something, but that's it. That's why the mind gets... If you ever got to thinking about the things of God and what God has promised you and I in the Word of God, does, I mean, does it not make you go tilt? Your mind, your mind can't comprehend what God has promised to us. And He's made some big promises in this Bible to you and I. We're not walking in but a sliver of, of, of the promises of God in our lives. And it'll make your head, it'll make your thinking go tilt. It'll get you wondering. You'll, you can literally, I know people that think about it sometimes and they get overwhelmed. Just totally overwhelmed. Because they can't handle what it is God said that is ours, has provided for us. There's no way. So when we renew our mind, we get rid of wrong thinking. That's the reason why God told us to renew our mind with the Word of God. Get that kind of thinking out of your mind. Because our God's so awesome and He loves us. And we can have what He says we can have. We can be who He says we can be. And we can do what He says we can do. I don't care what any, anything else says out here in the, other, in, the, in the natural realm that could come against you. We can have and do and be what God says we can. We've settled for so much less for so long. But I'm telling you, God has taught you and I, we have came across the message of faith years ago for one reason, so that we would be alive and well on the earth today to carry out God's walk of faith right now. Because He needs us. You're called for such a time as this. That's the reason why you've heard the, the faith message. It's the reason why this stuff just rolls off your back like, uh, like water on a duck's back. Amen. He has a reason. He has a purpose. He has a plan for each of our lives and stuff. And we have to walk it out by faith. Amen. And he says, renew your mind. Get rid of the wrong thinking. Replace it with what God says. What God says concerns... God's word is the answer to all the problems that's in the world. It's all there. It's all there. 
Amen. You ever notice the devil uh, will bring up the same thought over and over? You ever got that thought in your head and it just goes round and round and round and round? You know? Same thought over and over. And uh, some of those thoughts will trouble your faith. It's the reason why he put them in there or gave you that thought. He's bringing trouble to your faith. How do you get past that? Have you ever done it? I mean, you get, you go to bed at night, you thought about it. One of the last thoughts was that you thought about it. You got up the next morning and said, huh, I'm still here. And, <laughs> and the first thing that comes to your mind is that thought again. And then you start going throughout your day and that thought just keeps going around and around and around. How do you get past that? How do you get past it? Amen. You answer it. You answer it. You say something. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. That's not my thought. Doesn't the Bible say to cast down every imagination that exalts itself above the Word of God? Every thought that can come against you into your, 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 your mental realm, you have to weigh it whether it came from God or from the devil. You have to. Because that's where the battlefield of the mind is where the devil gets us uh, most of the time is in the mind in the, or thought realm and stuff. And so you have to deal with that and take care of that quickly. And if you're a faith person, you'll say something. Oh, no. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's not my thought. That's not, what, it, it, that's not my business how God is going to do that. It's not my business how God's going to bring the money into my, my hands. All it is, all I got to do is believe God for it. And you have to tell the devil. And you have to call it forth. Call for it. Just like you go outside and call for your pup or your cat or something. Money cometh to me now in the name of Jesus. Remember that old saying? Say it. Somebody says, well, you mean you're going to talk to money? Well, Jesus talked to a tree and it obeyed him. So evidently inanimate objects can hear can hear faith spoken. Evidently. I don't know how it all go, happens that way, but it does. And let me tell you something. Y'all know this is a fact. Not just, it's a fact, but it's a truth, a profound truth. But it's just fact, too, for the world, as far as that goes. Somebody that's always in the negative realm, always operated in fear, what does it seem like happens to them in their lives? They always attract all this crazy stuff going on in their lives. What happens to somebody that's over here in the faith realm? It seems like they always attract the favor and the blessings of God. It's like a magnet. There's people that will get mad at somebody like Jerry Savelle. Jerry Savelle's had the favor of God on him like no man I've ever heard of in my life. I mean, the favor of God in everything that he does. Why? Because he's over there in the faith realm. He refuses to walk over there in that other stuff, and it's like a magnet to him. It just draws all that goodness of God into his life. And that's the way this thing works. That's the reason why it's so important for us to guard our heart. Be careful what you let in these ears. Be careful what you see with these eyes. And certainly be careful with what comes out of your mouth. Don't speak anything contrary to the Word of God. Amen. And if you're in a situation where there's things that's being spoken and you have no control because you have to be there, whether it's job or whatever, just pray in the Holy Ghost under your breath and that stuff just bounces off you like nothing. 
Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Guard your heart. Guard it. Amen. So we say something. Amen. It's not our business to figure it out. <clears throat> it's my, my business is to believe it and to call it. Believe what God says about it. Stay out of the mental arena and keep from staggering like Abraham did. If Abraham was able to do it, we can too. Amen. Yes, we can. Number six, the Bible says he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's verse 20 again. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Don't give glory to your ability. You know, that's the reason why in Scripture we see that it talks about a rich man won't enter. It's, it's hard for a rich man to enter into the, uh, the kingdom of God. That's why he's trusting in his abilities, not in God, his abilities. That's why it's hard for him to get past that and get over that. He's got to trust God. Amen? So, uh, give glory to God. Give the glory to God. Be strong in faith, giving glory to God. So, this is how you're strong in faith. is throwing your hands up and start praising God and worshiping Him and giving Him all the glory of what he's doing in your life. Don't give glory to your ability. Don't give glory to your circumstances. You know how you give glory to your circumstances? Let me call Mary Jo up. Hey, you know what just happened? All you're doing is giving glory to that circumstance. That's a hard one to break. And in, 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 in Western society, not only uh, is your desire sometimes to want to go blab it and tell everybody everything, but everybody, somebody hears it and everybody's coming to you. The devil's prating them in like, like a freight train. Uh, I heard this, how, how, how you doing, you know? And I always ask, how you doing? You know your best answer? I'm, I'm the healed of God, I'm blessed of God, and don't say anything else about it. Just zip it. Don't try to figure out how God's going to do it or anything. I'm just, the Bible says, I believe in what the Bible says. I am the hill of God. Thank you for asking. And that's it. Well, what if the doctors, doctors are saying I'm the hill of God and that's all they're saying. <laughs> they know that's not true, but who cared? It shut them up. You don't got to keep talking about the stuff. You don't got to give the glory to the circumstances or to the situation. Give God all the glory of what's going on in your life. What is getting your attention is getting your glory. What you are giving your attention to is getting your glory. Okay? Give God all the glory. To have strong faith, give your attention to God. Whenever the enemy attacks, just start praising God. He hates it. He hates it. You remember Paul and Silas locked up in a prison? What'd they do? It says they prayed and then they praised. When they were praying, guess what? Nothing was happening. It was in a, in a, in a degree. We know that. But when they stepped over into praise and they praised loud enough that the other prisoners could hear, hear them, God showed up on the scene. It was such a powerful move of God. The earth shook. 
the iron doors opened, the shackles on their arms and legs fell off their bodies. Set free by manifestation of the power of God in a prison. That should tell us something. That should tell us something. Whenever the enemy attacks, start praising God. You know, praise steals the enemy. What were, I mean, what were they to do? They, what they were doing during that time, it says they prayed first and then they entered into praise and worship. They were strengthening their faith at that time. Why? Because the enemy was trying to destroy their faith in God in that place. See, faith needs our praise. Your faith needs your praise. Fa praise is an act of faith. <laughs> it's putting your faith into action. Faith is dead without action. So don't ever laugh at somebody that just busts loose in church or, or, or wherever you may be and they st you hear them praising God and everything. What in the world's going on here? Just know they're acting on their faith. They're putting action with faith. Because you, you, know, you are releasing your faith at that time. As we praise and give glory to God. Praise, praise brings the anointing of God on the scene. We do that. That's the reason why we hold praise and worship before we have a service. It's to change the atmosphere from whatever it is we may have brought in with us and stuff. And praise will do that. Amen? Praise will do that. It brings the anointing of God on the scene. Praise and invites God's power to come into manifestation. Why? Because praise is an act of faith. And it's impossible to please God without faith. Some of the greatest tests that I've ever faced in my life, uh, I came out on the other side because of praise. Might have seemed little at the time, but you know, I'm serious. I, I, you, you, I think back in my life just because I entered into praise. Or either somebody said something to me and then I acted in praise after they spoke a word and, got, and told me something or whatever. Amen. See, your pastor can't praise for you. Your wife, spouse, husband, or whatever cannot praise for you. Only you can praise. Amen. Our boldness uh, in that is an act of faith in praising God. Amen. Other believers can't praise for you. I can pray and, and, and say those words, you know. Praise God for what He's doing in your life. But you've got to do it yourself. You've got to act on these things yourself. So many say, uh, hang on a minute. I lost my place. Other believers couldn't praise for me some may say, uh, I'm embarrassed at, at, at in praise or whatever. And all I can tell you is, well, don't be. Don't be embarrassed at getting your miracle. Don't be embarrassed at getting your supply of whatever it is you're believing God for or whatever the need may be. Don't you dare get embarrassed for that. Because it has absolutely nothing to do with what anybody else thinks about it or anything else and what you are doing. And the last one I want to share with you is number seven. Abraham was fully persuaded 
in Romans 4, 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, what God had promised, he was able also to perform. You want to know what faith is? It's so simple. What you, I mean, how hard is it for us to just start praising God and stuff? How hard is it for us to just fully be persuaded? It's not hard at all. All we have to do is just believe it. Believe God. Amen? All you have to do is believe that what God said, He will do. Does it not say that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him? The Bible says that God's Word, He can't lie. He's not a God that would lie. He's not a man that would lie. But He'll do exactly what He sent His Word to do. That's being fully persuaded. That's what faith is. Faith is just very simply taking God at His Word. Well, God, you said you'd do that. That's all it is. That's faith. That's the strongest, most powerful faith you can have well God hang on a minute now Lord you said you would do this I didn't say it I'm just t- reminding you of what you said tell him that sometimes <laughs> amen no it means God is going to do exactly what he says he's going to do faith is not believing God can neither I'll find people that I get around trying to minister to and stuff. Yes, I believe God can. Well, guess what? An unbeliever believes God can heal. But it doesn't bring healing. Believing God can don't mean nothing. Because God can do anything. The devils believe. Not only the devil will believe, the devils know God can heal. <laughs> Amen. It's not enough to believe God can. You have to believe that God is doing this right now in your life. Right now. Right now. I receive it. God is working on it right now. Just know that God is working on it and will cause you to sleep at night and not be in the mental realm worrying about things. Amen. Just know that. God's working on it. He's got it. Because it's enough just knowing that God is not a liar. And that his word is true. Be fully persuaded of it. Be fully persuaded of it. Amen. So number one, you call those things which be not as though they were. Number two, he Abraham believed according to what was spoken. He believed what God said, nothing else. Number three, he considered not his own body, he didn't consider the natural circumstances that he faced. Didn't consider it. Did not consider it. Number four, he considered not Sarah's body. He didn't consider other people and their circumstances. And I'm going to tell you concerning that, the devil is going to come to you with as, as many people as he can to pray it in front of you and tell you, well, they didn't make it. They were believing God. I know them. That was my mama or daddy or this, that, and the other. Don't consider it. Don't even go there. Do not entertain that. The Bible says to cast down every imagination, every thought that will come to you that is trying to rob you of your faith, you cast it down quickly. Number five, he didn't stagger at the promise of God. He was consistent in his faith. 
staggering as one day you're over here and the next day you're over here. You're like a roller coaster. Don't do it. Stay consistent. Stay with the Word of God. God's Word is, is, is true and it's consistent. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. <clears throat> Number six, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You want strong faith? Start learning how to give God all the glory of what he's doing in your life. Just give him the glory. Number seven, he was fully persuaded that God is going to do what he said he is going to do. Amen. So, you know, here's the thing. Can't we say it? Say this. God is doing for me what he said he is going to do for me. And he's doing it right now. That is strong faith. And you should say it every day. You should say it every day. Every day. And any time the devil tries to attack or anything else, you just keep on saying it. And keep on saying it. Amen. Keep standing on the Word of God. Would y'all receive that this morning? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Real quick, if there's anything, I want to just give a, a quick little altar call. If there's anything you need prayer for, the Bible says to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you have any anything at all we need to pray about, get in the prayer of agreement, we want to pray with you this morning. Hallelujah. Prayer changes things. Amen. Prayer changes things. And if you're standing also, we just want to stand with you and continue to stand with you. Glory to God that God's word is true in your life. Amen. We need one another in times. Y'all know we live in, we're living in troubled times. Y'all know that. We are living in dire, troubled times like never before on this earth. And we need one another. That's the reason why the Bible says to assemble yourselves together. That's the reason why we have church. That's what church is all about. And coming to church, not just hearing it on social media. Amen. That's the whole reason. God knew that we would be living in this day and hour. And we was going to need each other. That's the reason why he says pray for one another. He tells us to pray for one another. Amen. Hallelujah. So is there anything at all, anybody at all, have anything need to pray about? Even if you have a testimony or anything that you want to share. We've already had one testimony this morning. Hallelujah. Got a bonus. Glory be to God. That's God. That's increase. Never getting a raise next month. There you go. That's increase. That's God. Amen. That is God. That's the blessings of God right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'll testify that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our redeemer. He's redeemed us from every curse, every sickness, every disease, every plague, everything. He's our redeemer. He's already bought and paid for it. He shed his blood for it and I'm going to believe him on it and I'm going to stand on it in the name of Jesus all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Hallelujah. And I pray you will too. Let's just close out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love and for your mercy. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you are a God that does not lie. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your word, the Bible says, even is established forever in the heavens. It'll never change. It will always be there. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. It'll always be here. That's how sure it is. We thank you for it. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it. I pray over each and every person here. I call them blessed. I call them healed. I thank you, Father God, that the favor of God goes before each and every one of them. I thank you, Father God, that the, each person here 
and those within the sound of my voice will walk in the anointing that you have in their lives and they will fulfill their destiny and, and their plans that you have for them in life. I give you glory, honor, and praise for it. I want to thank you. With long life will you satisfy each and every one of us and show us your salvation and it shall be well with us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.